With the reveal of Darth Plagueis and all this talk of virgences in the Force, this has led to the Acolytes having even more theories than your usual Star Wars series. Today I'll be breaking them all down, from Plagueis creating the twins, to Chimere being hundreds of years old. Uh, just so y'all know, this is going to be a very uh, poorly edited video, just because I'm exhausted and really don't have much time to make it at all. So apologies about that. I, you know, don't don't watch the whole thing by any means, but it's basically just going to be me talking about some theories and yeah, enjoy. Our first theory is that Darth Plagueis made Osha and May Anasea, who in Legends during the Grand Experiment, that being Darth Plagueis, tried to alter midi-chlorians through the dark side which ended up not working and killed the experiments, but the Force reacted to this by creating the life of Anakin Skywalker to balance the Force which was leaning too far to the darkness. Since Osha and May were conceived in a virgins by Mother Anasea, who created life, this theory suggests that Osha and May are actually one of Darth Plagueis' early experiments before the Grand Experiment, and while we don't have a verifiable answer to this, it can be debunked by the fact that Darth Plagueis was born in between 147 BBY and 120 BBY according to legends, which means if we're going off of that date, Darth Plagueis would only be 15 in the Acolyte, which takes place in 132 BBY, and that's leaning on the far end if he was born in 147. If he was born in 120, well that present a slight problem there, so I doubt he was already doing his experiments without even a basic knowledge of the dark side, and then also it wouldn't make sense for him to be doing those experiments for an entire century without ever trying anything else. Now as far as Darth Plagueis being in the Acolytes, I think it's an interesting thing that theoretically could work if maybe uh, Quimir is his first apprentice or something like that, but we might see Tenebrae in Season 2, or we might not get Season 2 because of all the hate for Season 1, but we don't know until we get there. For our next theory, Chimir was whipped by Vernestra. This refers to how Chimir has a massive Y-shaped scar across his back during Episode 6, Teach Corrupt, when he is seducing Osha to the dark side. We see a scar in his back which has a sort of Y-shape, which Osha asks about how he got it, assuming someone stabbed him in the back, but Chimir says it's from someone who threw him away but doesn't elaborate any further even after Osha asks if it was his Jedi Master. So it could be a Jedi, or maybe even a Sith too. Now Vernestra Roe, this green Marillion Jedi, the same species as Luminara Unduli and Beris Afi, has a light whip and people have speculated that this marking comes from that, but the problem stands that her light whip is different than someone like Lumaya, who has one that splits into different sections, whereas Vernestra's doesn't, so either that marking is not from her, or she simply slashed him twice with it, but just saying that it comes from that whip itself with like one hit wouldn't really work here. Back to water on unknown planets, this next theory suggests that the water which Chimere gets into on this unknown planet is back to water somehow and that if Chimere is old enough to have been a Jedi before Master Soul, as Soul doesn't recognize him in the uh, apothecary, that maybe he is a hundred years old and is using the Bacta to appear younger and heal his frail body. Also Vernestra is born in like 248 BBY so he could easily be her apprentice from 50 to 60 years ago. And we've seen back to heal people in the Book of Boba Fett, and also with Darth Vader and his meditation chamber and all that stuff, so that's why that theory even exists in the first place. Next one is talking about Yoda and what he says in The Phantom Menace. So when Yoda says with confidence that always two there are, no more, no less, Leslie Hadland, the showrunner of The Acolyte, took this as him knowing from personal experience based on the way he says it, but then again, the rule of two would have surely been common knowledge during Yoda's time as it's not too far after the Sith Wars, so it is quite possible he could just know of this that way, but I see where she's coming from in the idea that he is actually talking from experience here when he's talking to Mace Windu, but I don't know, I mean, I feel like Yoda's seen a lot since time, but I, I still think that could go the other way too. 
Only those conceived with the force can force choke. The NSA twins were created through a virgins, as was Anakin Skywalker, and they both primarily use force choke as a last resort ability, but what if there are what if they are the only ones who can use it? Well no, Luke Skywalker, Cal Dooku, and Palpatine have all been guilty of this as well, so that is certainly not a valid argument. Chimera uses Essence Transfer. Chimera used Essence Transfer in the sense that he has had multiple lives up to this point. A force power from the novels which has been around for a while is Essence Transfer, which essentially is when you move your consciousness into another body, such as an inanimate object. One danger of using Essence Transfer is that it would completely destroy your former body after completing the ritual, and Palpatine actually used this in one of the books when he was trying to survive and have immortality after Return of the Jedi. But a lot of people do think that Chimere, just because of the fact that Soul never recognized him when he was the human on that one planet, I believe it was Olega, and yeah, he never recognized him there, so it wouldn't really, really make sense for him to have been like human because he would, he only looks like he's 40 or so in this show, and uh, surely Soul would have been alive then. Now, I mean, yeah, it wouldn't make sense because Soul says he's friends with Vernestra, so he'd probably know her Padawan pretty well too. So overall, that just he would have to be some sort of uh, different species or have performed some sort of Sith ritual in order for that to really make any sense at all. Um, yeah. So that's all the theories I'm going to go over today because I don't have a lot of time to make this video. Sorry for the brevity of the editing. Like I said, just not a lot of time, so it was a little bit rushed. Um, as a brief review of Acolyte Season 1, I guess, since I might as well. Um, I don't know, I definitely want to do a video talking about all the things I actually liked about the show, consider in the light of how much hate there has been. Uh, I think that would be a pretty good video essay. But overall, I'd rate it like a 6 out of 10. Um, I definitely think it's gotten way too much hate a lot. But anyway, that's it for this video. You can subscribe if you want to. Uh, check out the live streams we're doing every Friday. And consider checking out the merch store as well for some really cool summer merch. Like the iHeart Filmmaking hoodie, which I have made in light of the uh, short films I'm currently working on this year. But yeah, um, let me know in the comments if you have any questions or video ideas. Or anything related to this specific video as well. But I upload normal videos every Friday at 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I post shorts every single day. But uh, yeah. See ya.